And a Deacon Diana dropped off this cool terrarium as a gift for my family. Here it is. Why? Well, because she had some of the people at church made them at Let's Get Crafty, and she wanted my family to have one. Now, there are special rules for taking care of this plant. I have to make sure that the plant gets sunlight, oxygen, and some water, but not too much. If I follow these directions, the plant will stay healthy. If I forget, it might get weak and sickly. Relationships are kind of like this plant. In order to stay healthy, they need special care, like checking in with your friends and spending time with them. That's been really hard since we couldn't hang out the same way we used to. We had to find new ways to make sure our friends are okay. Maybe we call them on the phone, send them a letter, or see them in faith formation on Zoom. We also had to think about our relationship with God a little differently, because we have to think about God as outside of the church building. We have to find new ways to spend time with God. Our relationship with God doesn't need sunlight, oxygen, and water, but we do need to spend time reading the Bible, talking with God, and loving other people with our actions. This year has been tough for, tough for some of us to find God where we are. But I know there is hope that we can learn new ways to see God if we continue to work on that relationship and if we love other people with their actions. This practice is talking to God right now. Amazing God, thank you for teaching us how to care for our relationship with you. Thank you for loving us even when we don't get it right. Help us to see you in new ways in our everyday experiences. Help us to love you and our neighbors more. In Jesus' name, amen. A reading from the fifth chapters of the second Kings. Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand on the call of the name of the Lord his God. He would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned away in a rage, but his servants approached him and said, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan. According to the word of the man of God, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Peace be It was such a simple act, wearing a face mask in order to protect others. Sadly, the wearing of a face mask became a political statement, a facial bumper sticker of sorts. Such a simple, easy way to protect others. The refusal to do this simple act ended up causing great harm. I wonder, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wear a mask? Every day, these simple choices are before us. West Whiteland Township has now made recycling easier than ever. You don't need to sort paper and plastic, but still studies tell us that our landfills continue to overflow. Rather than taking the time to bring bags to the grocery store, we consume more and more plastic, polluting our environment and failing to care for God's creation. 
When we return back to in-person worship, I hope we will continue to use online bulletins rather than paper ones. I recognize that I'm meddling, so I pray Pastor Gary and the youth leaders will forgive me. See, Diana asked me to talk about how my generation encounters God, and I tell you, we watch and we listen. We care about creation because we believe climate change is real and that the next wars will be fought over water rights. I wonder, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was recycle and start composting? Such simple acts. I remember when Declan Marilyn Schneider asked us to... write a card to inmates in prison at Christmas. At first, I wondered why a card would matter. But then I thought about being in prison, perhaps without family or friends, and receiving a handwritten note, a reminder that I was not forgotten, not alone. Here at Grove, you are invited to do simple acts that transform lives. I wonder, if a prophet commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was make a casserole, write a card, you see, we know from our Old Testament readings that Naaman is described as a decorated military general. He is a man of great power, wealth, and influence. But then, Naaman's life is turned upside down. He finds that he has the most dreaded and feared skin disease, leprosy. Remember how people treated lepers of the time? People would not come within six feet of you. It sounds like living in a never-ending COVID reality. And this is the military general, a great leader. You can imagine, Naaman is ready to go to any lengths to cure his disease. He would be ready to fight an army or climb up a great mountain. Naaman travels to the prophet's house, carrying caravans of silver, gold, and regal garments. He is ready to bargain for his healing. But when the great general arrives, he is not met by the prophet, and is instead met outside by a child, a Jew, a slave, a girl, who offers him the path to healing. She tells him to go and dip himself in the muddy creek, the Jordan River. Naaman is so upset to be greeted by just a child. What does a child, what does a youth have to teach an adult? Why wasn't the great Naaman greeted by the great prophet? And doesn't healing involve some great act? Isn't following God about great things, big things? How can it be so simple, wearing a mask, starting a compost pile, preparing a casserole? Surely God expects something bigger, better, set in lights with more fame and more glory. Naaman wants a miracle that dazzles himself and others. Naaman, the great general, stands in front of a child who tells him to go take a bath. He has a choice to make. He can wait for the fireworks, or he can go to the river, he can take off his armor, and he can splash around like a child, again, and again, and again, and again. I always laugh when I think of him having to take a bath over and over again. God knows that in order for something to become part of our lives, we need to do it faithfully again, and again, and again. Like Naaman, sometimes in our own discipleship, we wait for the extraordinary without realizing that God is calling us to do ordinary, everyday acts. God is calling us to wear a mask to protect our neighbor. God is calling us to take care of the earth. God is calling us to serve others. Simple, everyday acts that lead to healing for ourselves and others. We sometimes want the glory, the fireworks, the dazzling miracles, but we forget that Jesus showed up not in the Hilton, but in the stable. Jesus' acts were simple, everyday acts of service, using ordinary, simple items to convey the grace of God. Bread, water, and wine. Jesus washed feet. Jesus went to five guys with those picked last for the team. Jesus spoke words of forgiveness to all people. So, Grove family, this morning, like Naaman, we are called to do simple, everyday acts of faith. If the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, go forth to follow Jesus this day and always. Thanks be to God. Amen.
A reading from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall receive their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. At a little over a year ago, March of 2020, that month started out usual for a high school student like me. My classwork was heavy and my extracurricular activities were keeping my afternoons and Saturdays busy. At Grove, we began rehearsing tour music and I was attending choir rehearsals and gym each Sunday. That Thursday was one of my favorite events, community dinner. Looking back, we had no idea what was about to happen. The next morning while at school, I heard talk of this virus that infected a student at a neighboring school. It was said it was so contagious that they had to close the entire building and deep clean it. Suddenly, the what ifs and suggestions that our own school be closed was heard throughout the halls. This was Friday, March 13th, 2020. Official notice came that schools are going to close for what I believe they said two weeks. Then news broke, news broke that the state was ordered to shut down. I was so confused and somewhat shocked. My world was changed, fear entered, and my everyday routine came to an abrupt stop. I suddenly felt disconnected. The words, stay calm, stay safe, stay home, were a daily reminder of our new normal. How long will this last, was my question. Uncertainty was coming at me at a high speed, and I was on a roller coaster of emotions. At home, Questions on work schedules and who will get the grocery and do we have enough toilet paper were discussed. Schools were making plans to move to remote teaching. They would be using this thing called Zoom, a virtual meeting place. Honestly, the idea of wearing pajamas all day seemed enticing and was one of my first thoughts. Next, talk in my house on how to keep our youth connected without being together in person was happening. Calls, texts, emails were made, and I made, I reached out to a few friends myself. We planned to Zoom youth group meetings. At first, thinking this was all temporary, it seemed doable. Soon, though, I found it difficult to communicate with my friends without seeing them. I found out that I wasn't the only team feeling this way. The virtual youth group members were low. And I was conflicted in trying to be a role model and leader in gym, but not wanting to attend yet another rehearsal of a Zoom. School online was not good. Teachers were understandably overwhelmed, and it was difficult to pay attention during the material that was being presented. The news reported deaths from COVID-19 at an alarming rate. There was overwhelming sadness and little comfort at times. The spiritual part of me was also struggling. I depended on Sundays at church to give me time and thought with God. Yes, I said the occasional prayers through the week, but feeling truly connected happens inside church every Sunday. When streaming services were available, I found reasons not to watch. Another disconnect. I began to realize that I was gonna have to give more effort to make room for God in my life. I remembered God's presence wasn't only in church, but also through the words of scripture and religious songs. I listened to Christian music more and opened up an old daily devotions book. I found time to pray. I found comfort in my belief that through everything, God was and continues to be with me always. My feelings were all over the place, but God was constant, right there when I needed to talk to him. I allowed myself to sit quietly and grieve the loss of my normal life. I prayed about how I took what used to be normal for granted. I was now thankful for my life pre-COVID when my faith wasn't tested daily. As discouraging news came each week, I looked for and prayed for a sign of hope. 
I was connecting to my spiritual part again. I am not going to lie. It took a lot of work to hold on to that connection. Some days it was there, and some days it wasn't. Through songs like Truth Be Told by Matthew West, I accepted that not being in control of my emotions was okay. He brought the light that feeling alone and disconnected was common. And I don't have to lie and pretend that I, I have it all together in my connections. Truth be told, keeping the faith that normal was ever going to happen again was extremely difficult. I tried to keep in mind that this was temporary. I was reminded in the scripture verses in Isaiah that everyone can become weak and weary. However, our tiredness and weakness is cured by the Lord through his awesome strength. Hope leads us through adversity. Just as Isaiah proclaimed to the Israelites, hope in the Lord restores the power we need to make it through these difficult times. As months went by, signs of hope came. First was the opportunity of an outdoor church service. Now this was something I could get into. The helping person in me wasn't getting many opportunities to volunteer, so I jumped at a chance to assist in rooted outdoors. It was a chance to be connected in person again. I was grateful for the time to listen to the devotions and especially the messages in the music. Next, and soon after, the youth choir was approved to meet again in the building. We don't have the full choir and wearing masks while singing isn't great, but it's worth it. Suddenly, I looked forward to Sundays with excitement. Youth group also started, and I looked forward to playing games and talking each week. Those that attend would probably agree. Being together in person is a connection we need very much. I look forward to attending church again, but I know there are other ways to stay attached to God. As each week passes, I have moved from feeling dis completely discouraged to feeling hope. Hope that our lives will go back to some sort of normalcy soon. This year has taught me the importance of not only human relationships with others, but how important keeping a connection with God is to me. I started to drift away. I had to find new ways to connect when faced with a disruption in my routine. I do believe that as I go to college in the fall and cannot be physically in church each week, I will have these lessons learned last year to guide me. I find myself needing to find prey and move spiritually through music and moments when life throws me a curveball. I will trust God's love is in me at all times, and he gives me strength when I am weak. It is okay to have a pause in spiritual connection as long as I remember the important thing is to press play again. Jesus calls us to love God and our neighbor. Go in peace, longing to see the simple ways God calls us to connect with one another. Go in peace, seeking new ways to reconnect in our relationship with God.